Hey everyone, I'm Sion, The Unexpected Maker. I am stoked that I finally finished a project that I started in February 2019. It's WAPA, War Operation Plan Response. It's the computer from the movie War Games with Matthew Broderick, one of my favorite movies of all time. And I've wanted to build a replica of WAPA for a long time. Not the, the big machine, but the missile sequence, the unlocking sequence. It was completely gripping in the film. It added suspense and it added stress and pressure and I think it was really well done and I wanted to build my own. But I don't like producing things that are replicas of retro and replicas of old. I get that a lot of people do but I like putting my own spin on things. So let's have a look at what I came up with. And here it is. Look at that. It's identical. Identical to what's in the movie. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a mess of wires and a breadboard. But that's okay. I have plans. So this is what I've come up with. I've got my 12 digits, alphanumeric segment displays, their own backpacks from Adafruit, as you can see. Just because it was easy for me to prototype and put this together doing that rather than trying to build my own custom PCB for it. And I'm running it off a tiny Pico and using one of my audio shields. I've got two buttons and you'll see their use in a moment. And that's pretty much it. It's obviously a project that lives mostly as code. There's not a lot of hardware that's required for this. So the first challenge was to come up with some software that simulated the whole missile code unlocking from the movie. I wanted it to be a genuine reproduction of the sequence in which all of these different digits are unlocked and the correct code. Then I had some ideas for some other things I wanted to do. So I'm going to plug it in. It boots up. I'm going to, just for everyone's benefit, stick some acrylic over it so it makes it easier to see and something there to support it. So you can now see the writing quite well. Now the two buttons are a menu button or a stop button and a go button. So the menu button allows you to cycle between some different things that I've put in. So there's a random mode, there's a message mode, there's a clock, of course, because you've got to have a clock, and there's the movie mode. So I'm going to run the movie mode right now for you to see what happens. Here we go. And what's it launching? Well, obviously nothing. But there you go. So that was a bit of a challenge. I obviously had to find out what the correct code was, the final code. And interestingly, in the movie, there are two versions of the code, depending on which sequence you're looking at. But the final code that comes up is the one that I chose. So I had to scrub back and forward in the movie several times to work out the exact order of how they unlock. Then I had to write some code that had the ability to randomize every character that hasn't been unlocked yet, unlock them in sequence because they don't unlock in order of digits, put the right character in there and then keep cycling the rest till it got to the end. So that was kind of fun. I'm not going to go through the code in this video because no one likes watching code reviews in videos. And so, yeah, that's what I, I put together and I thought that was really cool. I had a lot of fun with it. And so then I decided to put a couple of other modes in. So go back to the menu. So the random mode picks a random code and it picks a random order to unlock it. We won't go through that now. And then the message version, again, is the same thing, but instead of showing launching at the end, it shows whatever message you've programmed in. And of course, the last thing that everyone wants to see is the clock. The clock is Wi-Fi enabled, obviously in Tiny Pico, so it goes online and grabs the current time. 
and it's currently 11.38 in the morning for me. There are a couple of other things I want to do software-wise for this, and that also requires a little bit of extra hardware, and so I haven't done any of that yet because everything's obviously on the breadboard. I really want to turn this into a product that can sit on my shelf, and obviously this <laughs> isn't really designed to sit on the shelf. This is an absolute spaghetti mess. And so I wanted to move this from breadboard to a PCB, and I didn't want to just grab some proto board and solder everything on, and I wanted something a little bit nicer. Unfortunately, as most of you know, I take things a little bit too far sometimes, and I've completely gone overboard with what I came up with. Let's have a look what that is. I made some PCBs! Woohoo! Of course I did. So, look at that. Whopper! Missile codes. 2019 Revision 1. Yes, I did design these and get them made in 2019. I've only got to them now. There were some other things I was waiting on. So, as you can see, on the front, there's room for the 12 digits, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and the two buttons go over here. We'll talk about these little pads up here a little bit later. And then on the back, I've got my three LED driver ICs, a couple of passives for each one. And then over here, there are spots for two sets of headers, and you can... The idea is you plug a tiny Pico directly into it and an audio shield directly into it. So it's exactly the same as a breadboard. I didn't want to put a microcontroller directly on this and some audio circuitry on this with a speaker and stuff. I wanted to use my breadboard kind of as is and just put a tiny Pico in there if I want to and take it out again. I actually think that this is a format that maybe some other people might want to build a whopper out of. So I've got five boards because that's the minimum I can buy. But I might kit this up and put it on Tindy if there's any interest from anyone. And that's basically it. So I need to assemble one of these. I don't even know if they work, because I ordered five and here are five boards. Let's put one together.
and there we go. It's a little bit messy, needs some cleanup because of the flux, but that is the front and the back done. A couple of things I need to mention. Firstly, these digits, they look like they're not straight, but it's just the plastic that's on top of them that needs to be peeled off that protects them. So I'll take all that off in a moment, and you'll see that they're all lined up nice and straight. The second thing are these pads over here that I mentioned earlier. These are actually for sideways RGB addressable LEDs, five of them. Now, I didn't get stencils made for this PCB, as you would have noticed. I assembled both sides with a soldering iron. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do these with a soldering iron. I definitely wouldn't expect people who are going to build this in kit form to be able to solder these by hand because the pads don't have a lot of exposed area where the LEDs sit and they melt really easily. So I'm going to have to find a solution for these and I might put these on just by smearing some paste on at some point. So it's five addressable LEDs and there's a spot there for a cap. So these addressable RGB LEDs are going to be used to show the DEF CON state. I'm going to cut some clear acrylic with the five digits on it and I'll be able to slot those in. You'll see in a moment where that'll happen and light them up. And I've got some more programming ideas I want to do to use those. Possibly have a clock running and then randomly throughout the day have it suddenly change DEF CON and then when it gets to, let's say, DEF CON 2, the missile decoding starts. So that could be quite interesting. Unfortunately, yeah, we're not going to see that today. There are some other issues with this build that I'll show you in a moment, but I guess the real thing we need to find out right now is, does this even work? So we need to plug it in and find out. I need to grab the Tiny Pico For those that were keenly watching, you'll notice that there was no antenna on this Tiny Pico. That's fine. Obviously, the Wi-Fi still works because it was getting the correct time. Okay, let's plug these into the back of the board. Okay, the Tiny Pico goes over here, and the audio board goes over here. So I should now be able to plug the power in, and it should work exactly the same way as it did before. Let's find out. I'm a bit nervous. Oh, look at that. It works. Menu button works. Sound works. And the displays work. That is fantastic. Okay, so this is not the end. As cool as this looks, it's a bit, yeah, unfinished. So let's finish it, shall we? Let's take all of this off. And how are we going to finish it? Well, I've 3D printed something for the front that goes around the digits. And I've laser cut some acrylic that'll go in the front. And I've got some screws and standoffs for it. And I've got these two button caps that are the wrong caps. So I bought some tall caps for these buttons so I'll be able to press the buttons through a front case. Unfortunately these buttons, I thought they were the right ones, but the section at the back that you connect onto is the wrong size. So I bought the wrong ones. I have some new caps on the way, but they're coming from China. Who knows how long they'll take to get here. So once I put this together, I don't even know how I'm going to push the buttons right now. But unfortunately I can't use these caps, which is a real shame. But I can put everything else together, so let's do that now. Okay. So that fits on there, as you can see, 3D printed. It's nice and snug. Leaves room for the buttons to get to it. It leaves no light coming through around here, the white section. And these are the slots up top here that I want to stick the acrylic digits into. But of course I don't have those yet. Now we need to do the acrylic. Time to peel it off. The reason I'm using the acrylic is that it needs diffusing, like at the start of the video. So if I'm going to put a diffuser on, I might as well make it a really nice front plate and that's what I've done. So it's using the tinted black and that sits over the front here. So that's where the tall button caps come into play because they need to fit inside there. And it's actually sitting lower at the front so this will sit on an angle. So let's get some screws in. I'm not using black screws on purpose. I could get some but I thought it might be nice to use these zinc plated ones. Okay, the top uses these little standoffs as nuts and the bottom ones use these longer ones. This is the first time I'm putting this together. I had no idea if it was going to fit or not, but it does. Excellent! So that is the finished product. 
obviously, <laughs> with some button caps in there that fit. I might try just 3D printing some while I wait for these other ones to come. I might be able to come up with a similar design to this, but with a bigger base that it can plug into. And this just sits just like that. Is that together? Yes, it is. It's on a slight angle, so I can see it as it's tilted rather than sitting flush like this. And the feet at the back here prevent it from resting against the tiny pico. Let's plug it in again. Make sure I plug it the right way. And now we have a beautifully diffused front panel. How cool does that look? That's my modern take on it. Let's get it going. Let's push this button. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in finding out more about how the code works or how to assemble something like this on the breadboard, please leave a comment below. To all my patrons, thank you very much. You're awesome. Until next time, catch you all later. Bye.